Are you ready to say goodbye to the constant ups and downs of the artist income roller coaster? Whether you're a full-time artist who wants to increase and stabilize your income, a part-time musician who wants to go full-time, or a hobbyist who needs to fund your passion projects, this podcast will equip you with the tools, resources, and inspiration to make it happen. My name is Bree Noble. I'm a musician, best-selling author, and educator whose mission is to help musicians like you to increase the income you're already making and tap into new income streams so you can create a more diverse, stable, reliable income from music and finally ditch the starving artist mentality. Now let's dive into The Profitable Musician Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. I am Bree Noble, and I am excited to be here with my new friend, Alex Love from The Awakened Creative. And here's the thing, we didn't know each other until probably a month or so ago. I started seeing his posts on social media and I was like, wow, these are really thoughtful, interesting, different perspective kind of posts that I'm not usually seeing from other musician coaches. And so it caught my eye and then I just kept, kept like seeing them and interacting. And then I reached out to him. I'm like, I'd love to have you on the podcast because I feel like we have a lot of the same ways of thinking about how, you know, we work with musicians, how we encourage them, the things that they struggle with, all of that. Um, and so that's why he's here. We're going to talk a lot about social media because he does such a good job with that. But I want to start out with your journey, Alex. Like, I know you're also a musician. So, you know, how did you get in, started in music? What have you been doing in music over the years? And how did you transition into being a coach for musicians? Yeah, sure. Hey, and yeah, thank you so much for, for having me. Um, that's really, really nice. I appreciate the kind words. Um, yeah, so I started playing piano uh, when I was about 10 and I've been a musician for, for my whole life or, or since then. And I actually started because my younger sister was playing and she was getting all of this attention from my mom. So I wanted some attention. <laughs> it that's didn't even funny. Come from a, yeah, it didn't even come from a place of you know, oh, I've got music in my blood, I have to do it. And I, I think it was in there. But, um, you know, I started playing and I turned out to be sort of okay at it. And um, I did that for, uh, I, I did piano lessons for about four years. I did my grade seven AMEB. I don't know if you guys have that over there, AMEB, piano uh, exam. No, I don't. We I don't think we do. It's like the, I guess it's the, the, the sort of standard exam thing mm -hmm. in Australia anyway. Um, and then, you know, as I, as I grew into more of a teenager, I started getting into heavy metal and rock and roll and all that kind of thing. So I learned the drums, I learned a bit of guitar, I played the trumpet for like six months. <laughs> um, and I just did that for like probably about 10 years before I got into electronic music um, when I was 24, which was in about 2014, I moved to Melbourne which is where I am now. Um, I originally come from this tiny country town called Bensdale, which no one has ever heard of. Um, <laughs> Especially me, because I don't know Australian geography at all. That's totally fine. I barely do myself. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so when I, when I moved to Melbourne, um, I started studying music. I studied a, a bachelor of um, music composition, started working with one of my lecturers in production and music sequencing and um you know backstage sort of backing tracks and live concerts and all that sort of thing um and then I, I sort of from there and I was I guess I was probably about 25 when this started happening and um I was doing that uh up until probably up until a couple of years ago to be honest and the the way that I went from doing that to what I'm doing now is kind of just a blur. I was just, you know, when, when you study music, you learn a bit about branding and marketing and that kind of thing. And, you know, it was always interesting. And then just over the years, I became more and more interested in social media. Um, I became more interested in just marketing in general, because it's just unbelievably interesting and fun and creative um, branding and all that sort of thing. And I just started helping artists with stuff. Things just were working. And then I just, uh, I just, I guess I naturally gravitated towards doing what I do now, which is 
mostly helping musicians and artists with social media or making money on social media uh, and that kind of stuff or just, you know, general career support coaching type of thing. I, first of all, you said marketing is fun and interesting, and that is definitely not something that most musicians say, at least not the <laughs> ones that I work with. It's For them, it's like scary and tedious. Yes, totally. <laughs> That's um that's a that's a a big one that you know when I was when I was younger I I um I hated the idea of it I thought it was gross and manipulative and and corporate and you know all that kind of thing and turns out it's it's all about empathy and helping people solve problems and understanding them and and providing solutions and all that kind of thing and it's so unbelievably creative um in in so many different ways and even more so branding is so unbelievably creative and fun and if you're if you're someone who likes to build worlds with with music or if you're a writer or if you're a you know you, you write a screenplay or something like that you create these characters and you create these stories and that's what that's what branding and marketing or in in a big way that's what it is and it's so fun because you can you can lead people down this path and you know connect with people in this in this just in this different way to to you know when you're just writing music and you have that sort of connection with the music and people connect to the music but then marketing and branding is this like it's the same thing but it's different I don't really know how to explain it but it's very fun it's very creative um and I think every musician should give it a proper go and see if they can see if they can find the fun in it. I love that you said that because I do always like to say that like marketing, a lot of marketing is telling stories mm. and telling stories is fun. Like we all love to tell stories when we write music, at least, you know, the singer songwriters that I work with, like that's a big thing they want to do is like tell a story through a song and marketing is also telling stories. It's just doing it in different ways. Totally. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. It's um, yeah, I, I, I feel like I've, um, I've ended up finding it, and I know this is going to sound horrible, but finding it more fun than music in a lot of ways. <laughs> <laughs> I know oh, that's you're kicked out now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I know, I know it's a it's a big thing to say. But um, you know, I I, I one of the things that I, I I had a bit of a grief moment when I decided to make the official transition from, um, you know, a working musician, which was a lot of work. <laughs> um, to, to sort of an artist coach Sultan because I thought that I was going to, I thought I was giving up my creativity and I, I had a legitimate moment of, of grief where it was like I was saying goodbye to this thing and it was a, it was a bit overblown because I can make music whenever I want. <laughs> but, um, you know, to sort of, it felt like I was severing a relationship with, with this creative identity and that was my whole life, you know. And then it turns out that every single day I get to, you know, I have fun with designs. I learned how to design stuff. Um, I learned how to tell stories. Um, you know, you get to think about, you get to explore human psychology and the human experience and talk to people and figure out how they're feeling and just, I, I suppose, enrich your understanding of the world. And it feels really creative to me. Really, really. I can see why I enjoy your social media and your marketing because you clearly enjoy it. And that's why you're so creative and what you have there is so different. So I, I love, I love that perspective. And, and I get it. Like I kind of gave up music for a while. Um, I'd say but the first almost seven years of working with artists, but recently I got called back to a church job and I'm loving getting back into music and doing music very regularly, but I feel like there's, you know, there's seasons, right? Maybe you'll go back to music eventually. Or like you said, you can always just make it if you want to. <laughs> true, true. No, that's that's so true. And and it's something that I'm sure you'll understand this. It's always there. It's always there. Mm -hmm. But the other thing, and this is just maybe this is just a personal thing, but there are so many good musicians out there now, really, really good. And it's, it's amazing. Uh, but you know, those, those musicians who are really top tier, amazing, they're doing a lot of work, you know, and I, I feel like, um, 
I, you need to be a, a certain kind of person to, or a certain kind of musician to really fully immerse yourself with that level of dedication. It's, it's just a different world. And um, yeah, I think, I think for me, and, and this is something, and maybe we can talk about this at some point, but I actually, I worked in music and I loved it, but I didn't love it as much as I thought. Um, and I enjoy it a lot more now. I'm, I'm less uh, analytical when I listen to music. Mm-hmm. Um, I just enjoy messing around with sounds and that kind of thing. Um, and I'm still working in the music industry and it's, it's, you know, I love being a part of the music world, but um, yeah, this is really fun. And yeah, some of those musicians, they, they really, they, uh, they make you question your, your, um, your abilities sometimes. And, you know, it's inspiring. It's really inspiring, but yeah, pretty amazing. Some of the people out there now. Yeah. I think sometimes when we're deep in study, like especially in college or whatever, we can get so analytical about music that we lose a lot of the, the playfulness and the fun and the joy around it. I definitely think I was there in college for sure. And I love that you said, you know, you learned some marketing and branding in college. I learned none of that. I was, it was very more like a It was a liberal arts school, but it was very like the music part was very conservatory ish. You know, we didn't learn anything about the marketing side. Mm, So I had to figure that out on my own. Well, yeah, no, that's that's totally understandable. And when I say we learned a bit, I really do mean we learned a bit. (laughs) Yeah, I I, I don't I almost don't want to say this because I really had the best time at at, um, when I was studying. But I feel like they're a little behind sometimes. Mm, In They are behind. Let's be honest. Yeah, they're, they're at least yeah. several years behind. <laughs> I think you're right. I really do. And I'm, I was lucky enough to have uh, a, a lecturer who was very involved in the, the modern music industry. He was a performer. He was a, a producer. Um, you know, he did he did a bit of everything. He was a teacher and stuff as well. But for the most part, the the marketing and the branding stuff we learned is just like it just feels you know, maybe we learned how to write a press release um, and maybe put together a, um, you know, like a really rough marketing plan or a really rough idea that you can't really do anything with, you know, and that was it. But yeah, you have to figure it out yourself. And there's so much information out there now, which is great, but yeah. it's That's cool. hmm. So, I mean, I don't know if you can actually explain this, but I'm curious what do you think, like, what inspires you to put the things that you do on social media? Because as I said, like from a coach's perspective, I feel like the angles that you're hitting are just like the things that you're putting out there are a little bit different than the average. And maybe it's just because you're having so much fun and being creative and also your posts, like you don't do a lot of, you do some, but you don't do a lot of video. Like a lot of them are like, they're either voiceover or they're like, text on the screen and they're still super valuable or they're like um what do you call those uh carousel posts you know that have multiple tiles where you can kind of like the five this but it's not like the typical what i get a little annoyed with on social media especially on tiktok i have to say um is the like everything is like five ways to blah 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 or five reasons Mm -hmm. to and it just it's it starts to get super stale and what i love about yours is like they're not the same five this and five that that I've seen around you know I really appreciate that that's so nice thank you um yeah I I think I'm I'm trying to half play the social media game and half just speak from the heart and speak from the head I suppose and um you know some some people most people they respond unfortunately I'm not saying this is a good thing but they respond to the five ways to blah 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 and they're, they're just, people are saying the same thing over and over and over again, myself included in, in that way. But the thing is they, you know, you need a way on social media, you need a way to drive traffic. Um, and you also need a way to speak to your people. And so the, the, the carousels, because they, you know, they get on the explore page and stuff like that. Um, they're usually very, very practical, actionable things because they perform really, really well. And so they bring a lot of people in. And then hopefully with all of those people that come in, they start to see the other stuff, which is, um, I suppose, things that I've learned just from my own experience and 
I am very introverted. I think about uh, I think about myself a lot, not in a selfish way, just in a sort of exploring myself way. And um, I talk to a lot of artists about um, uh, you know how they're feeling and how they see the world and that sort of thing. And um, what I've what I've sort of derived from that is that there needs to be a big perspective shift um, in general around music careers and social media and marketing and all that kind of thing. And also just the mindset work and the, the, the journey itself. And I'm rambling a bit here, but, but this stuff comes from me. Just, these are my thoughts. Like you said, I have a lot of fun with it. So I, um, I try to be half creative and half just exploring my own thoughts and my relationship with, with how I understand my audience and then half kind of actionable, playing the game, you know, that kind of thing. I hope that, I hope that kind of answers your question. <laughs> no, it does. It, it does. And, and I think that, um, you know, what, what go, what works really well is like, it's almost like you're, you're hitting them over the head, but like with a piece of styrofoam. So it's like getting their attention, but it's not like crushing them. Sometimes I think I, I go a little overboard with the like, come on artists, snap out of it. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, stop your, your, uh, scarcity mindset or whatever, you know, and I think that the way you're doing it, I mean, you're clearly a deep thinker and it's not turning people off, especially the people, the artists that are a little more sensitive or, um, you know, maybe wouldn't respond to like the whole tough love kind of thing that I do occasionally, <laughs> but I do. So I see sometimes you do, you do like finally get out, you sometimes just get out there and say, Hey, stop doing this <laughs> artists. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I think first of all, I think you um, you you have a very nice vibe on social media. I don't I don't get that um, harshness from you. I, I I like the tough the tough love thing. I think that that's really important. Um, but you know, I, I and this is one thing that I would encourage musicians to do when they're on social media as well is I really try and pay attention to what to how people respond to things because um, you know you'll make a post and maybe they'll they'll come back at you and um you know maybe they actually kind of have a good point sometimes you know like maybe maybe because a lot of musicians are unbelievably sensitive and I'm sensitive as well um very sensitive to this kind of stuff and you know sometimes life feels hard and that kind of thing and I listen to these these comments when um sometimes I might dish out some tough love in a way that's that's coming from a place of empathy um and they'll say something and they'll have a good point, you know, and some people, they have four kids and they have lots of people to look after and they have all of this stuff going on in their lives and they're getting, um, you know, they're kind of getting beaten over the head with, with, you just have to suck it up. You just have to figure it out. And they're, you know, it's really hard when you actually are trying to, mm -hmm. you know, and you're not getting somewhere. It's really, really hard to just keep hearing this. And people will say that they'll say, we need more than just try harder, do better, do more. And so I try to, um, I try to keep it real because it is incredibly hard work to do anything well, really. Um, especially like the music, the music world itself is just very, very difficult in, in my opinion anyway. But also I don't believe that the constant attacking and, come on, come on, come on, do better, do better, do better. You definitely need some of that, but, um, you know, negative reinforcement isn't always the, the, the most effective way to go, I suppose. So um, it's trying to find a, a, a balance with that and trying to be understanding. And, you know, as a quick side note, I, uh, some of the artists that I work with, the work that they have to do before they even get to the point where they're making really good progress is unbelievable, you know, and, and, and I'm not saying that in a bad way, just, just that they have a lot of um, mental blocks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And they really need to, they need to change their perspective about social media. They need to um, get over their fears and, you know, their self-sabotaging behaviors and all that kind of thing. And it's, I just think that we should pay attention to that because it's so many of the musicians, you know? Yeah. Let's talk about that. So you know, what is it, what is a healthy perspective that an artist should have about social media? I actually had someone say to me today um, that they're honestly afraid 
to get too many fans because they're afraid it's going to make them spend all their time on social media, you know, responding to people and engaging and stuff like that. And I did remind them like, Hey, if you have that many fans, then, you know, hopefully you're monetizing that and you can hire an assistant to help you. And your assistant can like flag certain posts that would be really beneficial for you to respond to. And you won't have to spend your day on social media, but I get that sometimes artists have that like fear of success. Like if this does start taking off, it's going to take over my life and I'm going to get burnt out. Mm. So how do you help your artists get a strike a good balance? Good question. Yeah. I, I think first of all, that's, um, that's really understandable that that fear of success. And also, you know, the more you're out there, the more you're exposed to, to potentially getting hurt. And there are people out there who say horrible things and all that kind of stuff. Um, what is a healthy perspective? The reality is, is that if you want it to be a major part of how you build your music career, which it kind of needs to be, there's this, you can do it without it, but it's probably really, really difficult. Um, you're probably going to need to spend quite a lot of time on it. And I don't mean hours a day, but you're probably going to need to show up at least a few times a week. And so it depends on where you're at, but I would say a healthy relationship is really, really focusing on um, why you're on it and what you're doing this for. And just really trying your best not to get caught up in the numbers and stuff like that. Um, really thinking about, you know, my, my thing is um, to help musicians build a meaningful presence online. And um, I really, I, I have that as my computer background, meaningful presence online. It's not about the numbers um, because I have to remind myself as well. But I think, I think a healthy relationship would be being on social media for the reason that you're supposed to be on it for, if that makes sense. And really not focus just mindlessly on scrolling. No, yeah. no, please don't do that. It's especially TikTok. It's such a such an endless black hole thing. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, it's a hard question, but but um, definitely that, and definitely just um, being on social media with the intention to connect with people, build relationships with people, and not see it as this um, this kind of thing where you're disconnected from people you know a lot of musicians get on there and they they think oh, i just need to post on this little machine and then my stuff will go out and then people will just love it and i don't have to do anything and it's like no you do need to be involved in it especially in the beginning um but it's so hard to not get caught up in the numbers and all this stuff and you know it feels it feels very uncomfortable sometimes so i think one thing that I do with um, with artists who struggle with this is um, we really, we really just spend a lot of time working on perspective and, um, you know, making sure that they are seeing that what they're doing on there is, is it's focused on people rather than, rather than a machine, you know, reminding people that person who commented on your post, reply to them. They're a person. You know, then it's not a little robot that's saying DM for promotion or whatever. It's a real person. Well, sometimes it is, and we can <laughs> sometimes, those, but yeah, yes, totally. There are plenty of those. Um, but it's really, yeah, it's you know, it's different for everyone, and this is kind of why I'm struggling to answer it a bit. But it it really is about um, helping them shift their perspective and and keep the focus on people, connection, and why they're really on it, and not focusing on the numbers and that's just really incredibly hard to do. I, I can't, uh, I can't avoid that, but um, you know, it's the sort of thing as well. And I'll try not to try not to drag this on too long, but it's the sort of thing where the more you do it and the more you sort of work on this mindset, the tougher you become and the, uh, the easier it is to not let the numbers get to you and, and um, to start to see how it is beneficial because you start making friends, you know, and, it suddenly becomes, well, not suddenly, it gradually becomes less about these numbers and more about the people and the depth of the relationships. And, um, you know, and another thing about this is that if you make one post and it doesn't do very well, you have a bad, that's a bad experience. But if you make a hundred posts and 30 of them don't do well, you get this bigger picture and you realize that, you know, there are a lot of fluctuations and, um, it's this kind of 
ever moving, ever changing thing uh, instead of just this, you know, I made a post and it's bad. And now my self-worth is, you know, down on the ground and all that kind of thing. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good question. It's a difficult one to answer because it's different for everyone, but I'd say people and relationships and, and focusing on your why. And I find too, that if you're on multiple platforms, so I always encourage people to have two main platforms, not go crazy and try to be on all of them. But like for me, sure. you know, TikTok and Instagram, and I do kind of repost some of it on Facebook just because I've been there forever. But um, like if, the, if one doesn't do well on one, it does tend to still do well on another. So like at this one post for whatever reason, like it's been up for three days on TikTok and it's got 40 views. I'm like, what in the heck? Why does TikTok hate this post? Like every other one is usually getting, you know, 300 to 600, whatever, more than that, right? 40 views. Are you kidding me? But then I look at that post on Instagram and it did, it did fine. It did like average. So it's not like there's anything wrong with that post. It might just be that people in different places or there's different audiences that like different things on different platforms. So I think that can help too. So you're not just like putting all your eggs in one basket for each post that you make. Do you do that too? Do you put yours on both? Absolutely. I, I, you know, I can't put the carousels on TikTok, but I definitely, all the videos. Well, you could. Technically, you could make a video out of them. I could. You're you right. Upload them all as photos. You could even do like a little voiceover. I do. The reason I know this is because I do it for our, our women of substance track of the week. I like do little screenshots of the artist and on different platforms. And I say something with a voiceover. You could totally do that with a carousel. That's a good point. You, you totally, totally could do that. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think I, I think for the most part, I usually have, because when I started out on TikTok, I was posting twice a day um, and I did that for a month, I think just as a kind of experiment or about 40 days or something. Um, but yeah, you know, that's a, it's a really interesting point because there are so many contributing factors to why things do well and things don't do well. And having two platforms helps you see that um, I worked with an artist very recently, we just finished and um, she made a post on Instagram and it got about 20,000 views. And for her account size, which was about 500 followers, that's great. That's huge. That's a, I mean, that's I don't think I've, yeah. I've never had anything get 20,000 views before. That's huge. It's, it's unbelievable. The, the, the fluctuations, um, people say Instagram's dead. I have a friend who's a vocal coach and she just went viral on Instagram and she gained, I think she gained 150,000 followers in a week. What? So it's absolutely not dead. Um, but yeah, you know, there are, there are things that, that, um, you know, for example, TikTok, it has so many rules around words. So, um, there, there are words that you wouldn't even think are bad words that TikTok will suppress your post because of, if you say link in bio, for example, it doesn't like that. If I think even if you say Spotify now, um, I don't know if that's a fact, I haven't seen any official documentation, but it's incredibly strict because they're trying to keep you on the platform by whatever means necessary. (laughs) Actually, now I'm thinking about it. And this post that I'm thinking of, I say both pandemic and recession in it. And I wonder if any of those are banned somehow. I would say almost definitely that's Ah, I didn't even think of that because on Instagram was not an issue. No, Instagram is much more, you can, you can say what you want on Instagram for, for the most part. Um, and, you know, there are so many other factors as well. Like you said, there are, there are different people on there, um, different times, different context. Um, some people, you know, a guy commented on one of my TikTok posts the other day saying, um, I like your stuff, but you're beginning to repeat yourself. And I went, well, I have to repeat myself because it needs to be said. But um, on Instagram, I got a very different response and it was like a, it was like I'd never said it before. <laughs> so. People are, you know, there are a lot of the same people on there, but also there are different people. And there are just so many factors that contribute to what's good and what's bad and how well something does. And you just, you have to do it enough to be able to see that bigger picture because then it just doesn't affect you. It's like, it's like um, haters. You know, if you get one comment, one hater comment, it's really going to sting. I get a lot recently. I've been getting so many, I don't, I don't know why, (laughs) but I've been getting so many and they just they just roll off me now because me too. I get a lot too. And I'm just like, whatever you guys. Are yeah. Nuts. 
okay. <laughs> Especially <laughs> when like, they're just totally nuts. Like, oh, okay, whatever. But like, it's like every once in a while, like you said, they do have a good point. Or like, maybe I didn't clarify myself quite enough in my post. And, you know, that was a good point that I should have maybe clarified that one thing. Right. And so it, it is good to be able to look at it and go, okay, yeah, maybe next time I talk about this, I can be a little more clear, but sometimes mm. they're just like crazy people. <laughs> yeah. Most of the time they're just crazy people. Yeah. <laughs> That's definitely true. <laughs> yeah. And it, it, you know, we were talking about musicians being sensitive. I mean, it for those of us who work with musicians, we get the brunt of that. We get the, you know, sometimes they are just super sensitive about something that we said and they just go off on us because they think that, you know, we don't understand them or, you know, we're trying to make them something that they're not. Or like, for me, I get a lot of like, why are you trying to bring capitalism into music? It should be all about the music and the art and, you know, stuff like that. Cause of course my brand is profitable musician and I get people have that perspective. That's fine. Well, don't follow my brand then because I'm going to talk about musicians making money. <laughs> yes, no, totally. And I, that's such a good point. And yeah, that's a really difficult conversation to have. And um, I've had some, some conversations with some very nice people who um, they really have a problem with monetizing art. Um, and then, you know, there are the, the, the fully business minded musicians who, tend to generally tend to do better and there's a reason for that um but yeah it's a it's a tough conversation but um you know at the end of the day if you can make money doing something that you love I really don't see anything wrong with that and um I think that there there are all of these kind of invisible these kind of invisible walls that people put up where they've just all these invisible rules you know making money from your art is selling out it's like why you know, oh, they changed their style to make more money. Maybe they are having fun with it. Maybe it's creative. Maybe they're just trying something new. I, I've always loved to try something different and I've never been tied to, um, you know, I've made music for fun. I've made music for money. They've both been good. They've both been terrible. I think if you're, if you're someone who really, really wants to do music as a, you know, that's the most important thing and you want to make a living doing it, you're going to have to make a compromise somewhere. And that compromise is that you're probably going to have to do it for money <laughs> at some point, you know, and, and I don't mean just to be clear, just, just to be absolutely clear. I don't mean only doing it for the money. I mean that if you really care about music um, and you really want to do it as a, as a, if you want to make a living as a musician, you've got to make money as a musician. And it's just a matter of finding out the way that you can do that without feeling like it's so horrible, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, these are the conversations that I got into on some of these posts about, you know, playing free gigs and stuff like that. It is all the perspective. Like if, if you want to play music for full-time or part-time and you need to make money in order to do that, then you eventually need to get away from these free gigs because they're not getting you anywhere. But if mm. that's not your goal and you want to play music because you just want to play music, that's fine. You can play free gigs. Totally. But I do think there's a line of like, hey, people that want to play for free, like stop trying to take all the gigs away from the artists that should be be paid because they're really good and they're doing this full time. So, you know, that's mm. kind of a hard one, right? It's like, oh, I don't want to tell yeah. these musicians, you can't not play for free, but yeah. you also need to think about the people that are trying to do this for a living. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think it's really, really tough to just have this conversation and I think a lot of the time the th this is where I, I get kind of stuck and this is where you know sometimes you, you can't help everyone and I feel like a lot of the um, a lot of the problem with this stuff comes from musicians having they want this thing and so in order to have this thing which is let's say a music career they have to do x which is marketing promotion um, say paid gigs um things like that and they say well I don't want to do that and it's like okay you don't have to do that but you don't get to have this kind of music career that you want um and I think that there's a real there's a real disconnect there and and often the people that are really struggling with this concept of of making money with music or 
even doing social media in general, they're also the people who want to be like a rock star or they want to be like a pop star or something like that. And, you know, it's, um, it's tricky. What do you do? What do you do with people like that? When you, you know, you either have to see if you can help them see things in, in a way that's going to actually benefit them and then, you know, kind of change their perspective a bit, or you just can't help them and they can continue to, to, you know, stay in their bubble, I suppose. It's a really, really tough thing. It is a tough thing because you have to be like, okay, like how badly do you want to do music? Like, are you willing to do music in a way that you aren't a rock star, (laughs) you know, or not? If not, then, you know, you can keep pursuing this rock star dream and the likelihood of it happening is pretty low, but you can keep pursuing that. Um, But you probably need to have a day job. Mm. But, you know, or is it more important? Like for me, when I got to my thirties, I was like, you know, I don't care about the rock star thing anymore. I just want to do music. Like yes. that's what I want my life to be filled with music. And so I was, you know, my career looked very different than what I thought it was in the, in my twenties, but it was awesome because I was doing music all the time. Totally. And that's, yeah, you found your thing and that's, that's amazing. And you know, the, the, the rock star lifestyle, the artists that I work with who are, you know, some of them are, are just starting out. Some of them are really, um, they're starting to sort of, they're like established, you know, um, and not, not one of these established artists, not one of them has the same attitude as the, um, let's call them the complainers, for example, they are, hyper driven and they are incredibly hardworking and they always find a way to make things work and and they make compromises but it's for the greater good and they're just they're always going for it and it's incredibly hard work and it's really admirable and and I really appreciate hard work I've, I've just I'm that kind of person who um I can't switch off and I'm not saying that's a good thing <laughs> but <laughs> um but you know these these people are you can't you can't be someone who just wants to dabble essentially and get to that level you just can't you have to become a new person and um you know for some people they they want the rock star life and they just they just can't have it they're just not cut out for it and that's okay and this is this is in large part what i try and talk about in some of my content is that you don't have to be that you can have a very comfortable life doing something that you love, but there are still compromises and sacrifices that you have to make. And it's still going to be hard work. It's just different. It's just a different thing. And um, yeah, again, it's just a really hard conversation to have because these, you know, musicians are so they, they're feelers, you know, and we, we feel things quite deeply and we see the world this certain way and I don't really know how to explain it but I'm sure you understand Mm -hmm. um and it it can be really hard to to um let go of the idea that you know music is this thing that good music is the only promotion that you need or something good music Uh, is the only thing that you need and (laughs) I don't even know how to respond to it anymore (laughs) I just don't know how to respond because it's just it's simply not true it helps to have good music in a big way it helps but it's it's not it just doesn't it just doesn't work and well I mean if you look at that in any industry or any business like you might be the best lawyer in the world or the best doctor but if no one ever heard of you it doesn't matter exactly I don't know why musicians don't see it in relation to all the other industries out there and how it's pretty much the same yeah, it's a it's a blind spot for sure, and and that's yeah, it's it's so tough. And um, I have worked with some artists who they've had this perspective, and then um, they have decided, you know, oh, okay, I'm going to give social media a go. I'm going to I'm going to try this out, and we take it really when 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 I'm working with people like this, it's really small steps. It's like okay, first let's figure out what what you like and what you would want to do. Like, let's, how do you spend your time with music? Let's just record that. Let's just document that. Let's put that up. Let's get you into the habit of, of doing this. 
And almost all of them end up saying, you know what, this is actually kind of fun. This is kind of fun. <laughs> it's kind of fun to record yourself because you, you know, you, you're doing music, you're doing stuff that's related to music. You're um, extending your artistic expression, or this is how I like to see it anyway. Um, and once you kind of figure out, once you get your foot in the door with social media and you, you find that you can do it, um, you know, you can kind of show up and you actually start posting stuff that you like as well. That's when you can start packaging it for social media and, and trying to make it effective, you know, because there's a difference between just posting stuff and posting stuff that actually works. That's a whole other story. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, well, let's, let's actually dive into that for our last subject here. Sure. How do we monetize social media? And this is like a huge can of worms, right? But number one, how can musicians? And then number two, you know, you and I, right? We are obviously monetizing it in a bit of a roundabout way, or maybe you're monetizing a little more directly than I am. But, um, you know, if musicians are looking to do something where they're providing even like a service or something, then it's kind of similar to what we're doing, right? So- yes. Why don't you approach it from both the musician side and then kind of like someone who's offering a service? Sure. Yeah. So I think um, most of the most of the musicians and artists that I work with who are monetizing social media in a in a in a really big way, it is some sort of offer. It's some sort of service based thing in in large part, um, and that's because it's it's pretty difficult, and you can definitely do it, but it's pretty difficult to, um, you know, let's say that you want to start a Patreon or something like that. And that could be, that could be an option. Um, if you've got, let's say you've got, um, a hundred people joining your Patreon and it's 20 bucks a month, that's $2,000 a month. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, if I dumb, is that, is that yep, right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, pretty cool that's a pretty good start and let's say that you've got that and maybe you've got some um income from a couple of other things as well that's not a bad start to a to a monthly income but the problem is is that getting a hundred people to your patreon even when you've got quite a decent following is pretty difficult and it's also a lot of extra work and a lot of musicians don't want to do that because they're already you know if they're if they're at this point where they've got a decent audience they're probably already doing quite a lot of work um, that said, you can definitely do that. And, and, um, the key with being a musician, um, you know, like a, like an artist or a musician who wants to monetize in, in a fan way, um, you know, with their fan base, if you have a really engaged audience and they love you and, and they're really, really into you and you can figure out a way to do something like Patreon or some sort of closed community, that's a great way to go. You could do like a merch strategy where you don't just have t-shirts available. You turn it into a, um, you turn it into like a story, you know, so you use um, milestones for merch. You keep creating merch. You, you come up with a plan to, um, you know, increase customer lifetime value sort of thing, um, that kind of thing. Some people still want to monetize with streams and I advise against that being something that you take too seriously um, unless you've got lots and lots and lots of streams, but that's quite difficult. Um, but yeah, with, with musicians um, who, who don't want to offer a service, I, I think it's quite difficult um, if you don't want to do songwriting or some sort of coaching or some sort of production work or some sort of session work or, um, you know, some sort of offer like that, I think um, like a merch strategy, uh, some sort of closed community um, is a good start. Oh, and of course, you know, you want to do gigs and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, in, in, in my experience, it's quite a struggle. Um, if I'm just being totally transparent. No, exactly. I agree with you. That is why I always, I kind of encourage musicians to have like a three pronged income strategy. And one of which is some kind of service. And like you said, totally. teaching, um, coaching, uh, 
like writing custom songs, you know, engineering, like things that you can do where you can get money in much faster. And it is not so much of like a barrier to getting people to say yes to you. Totally. And I I feel like it's a much, um, it's a much more, well, it's much more sustainable. It's much, uh, I almost don't want to say it. It's less work for more money. And I'm not saying it's not much work. It's just less work for more money. Um, Right. We're not saying it's less valuable. That's the hard part, right? It, no, it is, your music is super valuable, but it's just harder to monetize. Yes, totally, totally. Because we're used to just, you know, taking it for essentially free or whatever. Um, but, you know, if you if you want to monetize with a service or some sort of offer like that, that's a different story. And social media can be incredibly powerful. Um, I make a full-time living just from social media. Um, and it's all in the content. Honestly, it's it's 90% content. And then, you know, the, the relationships with people, but if you can, if you can figure out, um, you know, if you've got a really solid brand strategy, you've got a really solid content strategy that's, that's um, sort of directed or, or centered around this service, you know, if you, if you're that sort of thing, um, you can, you can make great money and you can be very happy and you'll still work hard, but um you'll be doing something that you enjoy and you'll be living in music. And, um, you know, I'm not, I'm, you can, you can be your own boss. It's amazing. It's really, really amazing. And how are you, <laughs> how are you driving them to take your service? Are you encouraging them to DM you or are you sending them to a page? That's a good question. So I used to, um, I used to do the, you know, DM this word and then have a conversation about it. Now, Fortunately, at the moment, I don't need to do that. Um, the I've just been working on my content, and people will just click the link in bio. They'll check the the offers out or whatever, and they'll book a call, and then we'll have a Zoom call like this, and just talk about whether it's a good fit and whether or not I can actually help. Um, and then and then we'll go from there. And um, but I, I really can't stress enough that it is the content. Usually, I would say ninety percent of the time when I get on a, a Zoom call to talk about potentially working with someone, they're already sold because the content has done it because it has, um, it's showing that, you know, I'm, I'm understanding them, I'm hearing them. Um, I can help them with their specific things. I'm not just, uh, you know, it's not a cookie cutter thing where they just go through this, this um, you know, process that won't work for them just like everything else. It's a personalized thing. Um, so by the time they get on the call, it's almost as if they've made their mind up already. And oh, that's absolutely. Because big- <laughs> if you are doing your marketing right, that is doing getting the sale for you. You don't even have to like really even have a sales conversation because they're already ready. Totally. That's exactly it. And and maybe this is a conversation for another time, but it's that same approach that musicians can can think about with their marketing and promotion. It's the content is all none of it's about me unless I'm telling a story that's relevant to them. And then honestly, it's still all still about them because your story, they want, you know, they need to see themselves in your story. Exactly. Right? Exactly. It's all about giving. It's all about providing. I, I, I you know, I almost don't want to say providing value because it's been said to death. Oh, it's but, so cliche, but it's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. It really is. Very true. Yeah, I feel content. like we need to plan another interview for 2023 because I feel like there's so much more we could talk about, but we're almost hitting an hour here. So I'm probably going to have to cut this short, unfortunately, totally. but it is, <laughs> no, it's so good because I, I think we really do have, we really have a lot of shared perspectives here. Totally, totally. And I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for, for having me on as well. Absolutely. Well, let everybody know where they can find you on the social medias we were just talking about. Yes, sure. So I'm on TikTok and Instagram as um, at, this is so frustrating, um, at the.awakened.creative. I wish I didn't have those dots, but it's just <laughs> it's just how I set it up. Um, and I also have a, uh, a website, which is just theawakenedcreative.co.co, not, not .com. Got it. Well, guys, you guys go find him, go follow him. You're, you're really going to like his content. I mean, if you heard everything we said today, I think you're going to know whether it's going to hit home for you or not. So definitely go follow him. I follow him. 
Um, he's one of a very small group of people that do what I do that I follow and I look at his content every day. So check him out. Thank you so much, Alex. This has been so fun. I'm so glad that we connected here and I really definitely see a part two in our future. Yes, I would love that. Thank you so much again. You're welcome. Thanks for listening to The Profitable Musician Show. I would love to know your takeaways and aha moments from this episode. Leave me a comment over at ProfitableMusician.com so I can bring you more of the information, interviews, and resources that you love. Thanks to Rondi Fay, one of my Academy members, for providing the music for our podcast. You can check her out at rondifay.com. That's R-A-N-D-I-F-A-Y.com. Just remember, knowledge is power, but without implementation, it is useless. And inspiration without action is merely entertainment. But I know you're not just a dreamer, you are a doer. And I promise I'll be here every week to support you and remind you that you can be a profitable musician.